brothers and sisters, I greet you all there. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. It has been a long day, and I will not take too much of your time. So allow me to direct your attention to the book of Psalm chapter 1. And you go through verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. So it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. For the next uh, five minutes or so, allow me to just share five points with you from the passage of scripture that we just read. Uh, point number one. The verse immediately calls us to be vigilant as it starts off by saying uh, that we need not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, a songwriter writes and says, you better mind where you walk. You better mind what you talk about. You better mind what you preach about because judgment day is coming. So therefore, you better mind. So it calls us to be vigilant on what we say, what we do, and how we respond to everything that is happening around us, to everything that is done to us, to everything that is done for us. I am saying this because we're about to begin a new week. And as we begin a new week, uh, there comes brand new challenges. Not only brand new challenges, but the challenges of yester week also tends to follow us into the other week. So there are times where we will be tempted to say things that we should not say. We will be tempted to do things that we need not do. So you need to be careful that you do not do the very thing that you will deem as evil if it were done to you. So it calls us to be responsible of where we tread and how we tread because every single place that we go, we leave traces of ourselves. We leave traces of what we stand for. We leave traces of what we represent. So if you call yourself a follower of Christ, you need to leave such an example wherever you go and in whatever you say. Thus, Paul writes and says in the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love it in the New Living Translation as it says, live as citizens of heaven. Point number two, it says that we need to be careful of where people locate us. Let me rather say, you need to be careful of where people locate you because your life is a movie and there are people who are constantly watching, people who are constantly learning from you, people who are strong because you are strong. And some may say, but well, people need to live their lives. Unfortunately, there is a sad reality of life that there are people who are looking into you and God has invested in whatever it is that you are going through. Because when you succeed, when you are strong, when you overcome, people get to see the power of God in you. So do not be a hindrance to people who are watching you because you will then become a stumbling block to the progression of those who are watching you. Point number three, it says, be careful of your association. Thus, the Bible goes on to say that bad company corrupts good character. And uh, when you look at nature in itself and the animal kingdom, eagles do not associate with pigeons because eagles do not share the same purpose, the same vision, the same strength and the same mindset as a pigeon. So associate with people who are to strengthen you and who are to benefit you spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, all these, are, all these aspects. You need to be able to identify yourself with people who are, going to, who are going to play a huge part in your development and play a huge part 
in your growth. Point number four, it says that um, the planting of the tree by the water brings forth fruit in its season. So we need to be able to plant our feet at the right place because where we plant our feet determines how firm we'll be able to stand because wherever a tree is planted when it is not planted in the correct kind of soil it does not grow up to live to its full potential so when we have invested our roots in the palm of the hands of Christ, we will be able to stand for anything and everything that we are going to face in the next week, in the next year, in the next decade, and so forth. So plant your feet. Plant your feet at the right place. Point number five in our conclusion, it says that you shall not weather like leaves but rather you'll be able to stand rooted and stand strong and stand tall like a tree. In order for a tree to grow, it needs water. So when a tree is planted by your water, but by the waters, there is no short supply. There is no uh, uh, running out of water to feed the tree. But the tree constantly is fed with water. So when we are planted by Christ, we are constantly fed by the Holy Spirit, everything that we need and everything that is essential for us to grow. We are living in a time where it is difficult to stand strong and to stand true for what is right. So as a people, when we are rooted in Christ, we know that we are given the strength to stand up against what is wrong and we are able to stand strong against that which threatens our very existence and our very principles as a people. So when you are able to plant yourself by the waters of the Lord, you are able to stand strong. And therefore, I say to you, in the beginning of this week, when you stand for God, God will stand for you and will st God will stand with you. When you are strong, the Holy Spirit will be able to work through you, with you, for you, and always for the people who are watching in your life. May God bless us all as we begin this new week. And may we be strengthened. And my prayer and my plea is that may the Holy Spirit be able to meet us all at our point of need. In Jesus' name, I humbly do pray. Amen.